Good morning to you all. Welcome to those who are gathered here in our church in Esker, and welcome to yourselves wherever you may be joining us today. You might just sit for a moment, those who are here with us, just a little word about the feast day today. It's St. Francis Xavier, priest, one of the first Jesuits himself and his companion, uh, Ignatius, Lopez, Inigo Lopez, known as Ignatius of Loyola. They were roommates together at the university in Paris in 1534. And they, with a few others, they gathered together. Francis Xavier was teaching philosophy, which was a very accomplished philosophy teacher in his early or middle 20s. And then he took his vows, they gathered together and took their first vows on uh, the 15th of August of 1534. And just a few weeks later, Henry VIII declared himself supreme head of the church in England. And we know that story that took on from there. So the Jesuits began at the same time that uh, Henry VIII began his attack on the church. But Francis, three years later, at the age of about 27 or eight, he set out from Lisbon with instructions from his friend Ignatius and he traveled to the East Indies, he traveled to India, he worked in India, then he went through Malaysia, and eventually he came to Japan. He learned enough Japanese to teach uh, the basics of the faith there. He formed Christian communities, and then from there he went on, traveled, and he had almost made it to China. He was within 100 miles or so of what we call Hong Kong now, when he died. And... Uh, just one of the, the great missionaries of the Catholic Church. He did an extraordinary work, and he was from the Basque country in the south of France. So we give thanks for him. And yesterday, somebody reminded me last evening, uh, yesterday, 40 years ago, four women were murdered. They were raped and murdered, four nuns, or three nuns, and a lay missionary, Maura Clark, and Mary Noll, Eta Ford, and Mary Noll, Dorothy Cazell, Ursuline, and Jean Donovan, a lay missionary. They were working in El Salvador, and on their way back from the airport, they were taken by the National Guard people and brought to a remote area. They were raped and they were murdered, and their bodies found the next day. And uh, the United States government at the time tried to cover it up, saying, well, they were really communists. They weren't just women, they were communists as well. They were working for the justice, for, go for the gospel. So we give thanks for the witness of those missionaries in our own time who were martyred for the faith. We give thanks. We pray for all missionaries everywhere, men and women, lay priests, religious nuns who are spreading the gospel. And all of us, we're all missionaries in our own communities and families, bringing the gospel of Christ to one another. So that's the feast day today. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will tell of your name to my kin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And to prepare ourselves now, we pause and ask forgiveness of the Lord and of God's people. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. You came to gather sinners to yourself, Christ have mercy. You are always pleading for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. O God, who through the preaching of St. Francis Xavier won many peoples to yourself, grant that the hearts of the faithful may burn with the same zeal for the faith, and that Holy Church may everywhere rejoice in an abundance of offspring. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 
We listen now to the word of God and notice the image of the rock. The Lord is our rock and uh, that's in, it's in the first reading and in the gospel. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. That day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city to guard as, ha as he has said, wall and rampart about us. Open the gates, let the upright nation come in. She, the faithful one, whose mind is steadfast, who keeps the peace because she trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord is the everlasting rock. He has brought low those who lived high up in the steep citadel. He brings it down, brings it down to the ground, flings it down in the dust. The feet of the lowly, the footsteps of the poor, trample on it. This is the word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm and the response is, blessed in the name of the Lord is he who comes. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his love has no end. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in men. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. Blessed, Blessed in the name of the Lord is he who comes. Open to me the gates of holiness. I will enter and give thanks. This is the Lord's own gate where the just may enter. I will thank you for you have been, for you have given answer and you are my saviour. Blessed, Blessed is the name of the Lord. He who comes. O Lord, grant us salvation. O Lord, grant success. Blessed is in the name of the Lord is he who comes. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord God is our light. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Seek the Lord while he is still to be found. Call to him while he is still near. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, It is not those who say to me, Lord, Lord, who will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the person who does the will of my Father in heaven. Therefore, everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a sensible man who built his house on rock, Rain came down, floods rose, gales blew and hurled themselves against that house, but it did not fall. It was founded on rock. But everyone who listens to these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a stupid man who built his house on sand. Rain came down, floods rose, gales blew and struck that house and it fell. And what a fall it had the gospel of the Lord. The Lord is the everlasting rock. I was in the prophet Isaiah. The Lord is the everlasting rock of his people. Jesus spoke many, many words and had many teachings. But the real word of God is Jesus himself. 
He is the Word made flesh. He was with God, the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So he is the Word in his person, in who he is. Yes, he has many teachings, and we can listen to many teachings, and we do. But the most important teaching of all is so blindingly simple and so wonderful it is. The Word became flesh. Jesus is God with us. He talks there in the Gospel about storms and the winds and so on. We've been through an earthquake in these last eight or ten months. The world has been rocked and still is being rocked by the virus and the economic effects of it. We're rocked by misinformation as well. We're rocked by political earthquakes and things that are happening, are going to happen, may happen, Brexit and other things. So the world is being shaken at the moment. And where do we put our trust in all of that? We build our house on the rock of the words of Jesus and the person of Jesus himself. The word became flesh and he gave himself for us. His name is God with us, God with them. So no matter what comes our way, whether it's personal tragedies, family tragedies, relationships break down, whatever is going on, illness, economic struggles and everything, all that we're going through, the heart of it all is God is with us. He became flesh in the person of Jesus and Jesus is alive and he says, I am with you all days until the end of time. I am with you. His name is God with them. He will make his home among them. They shall be his people and he will be their God. So somewhere or other we need to have that as the rock of everything. The person of Jesus Christ. He loved us. He emptied himself for us. Even though he was in the form of God, he did not count equality with God a thing to be clung to. Rather, he emptied himself and took on human flesh. And that astonishing mystery that God is in human flesh. The two things seem contradictory, but they are together. So there is the solid rock that no earthquake, no storms can shake if we hold on to that. And that's what Francis preached as he went from country to country, from India to Malaysia, Malaysia to Japan, but Japan towards China. He was preaching that God is with us. We are his people. He is our God and he is among us. The Lord is the everlasting rock. Jesus is among us and is the rock on which we build our lives. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We pause for a moment and we pray for all those intentions that are in our own hearts. We pray for Jesuits throughout the world and for all missionaries throughout the world, men and women, wherever they may be. Uh, we pray that they will have the courage to build their lives and their work and their ministry on the rock of Christ. Lord, hear us. And for everyone who is rocked by economic tragedies and the virus and illness, perhaps those who have contracted the, the illness itself, those who are suffering from broken relationships and family breakdown. We pray comfort and strength as we strengthen each other and walk together the road. Lord, hear us. 
And our lady at Cana, she pointed to Jesus and says, just do whatever he tells you. Trust him. Do whatever he tells you. So we'll ask her to pray with us and to pray for all God's people throughout the world. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given, human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of people's hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Let us pray that our sacrifice together may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, these offerings we bring you in commemoration of St. Francis' Savior, and grant that as he journeyed to distant lands out of longing for the salvation of souls, we, so we too, bearing effective witness to the gospel, may, with our brothers and sisters, eagerly hasten towards you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly just, right and just, our duty our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ who is our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the loneliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation so that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels, archangels, and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. 
For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, so that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. We proclaim the mystery of faith. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to me and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, trust in me and you will not thirst. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and Recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis Xavier, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and all the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family here, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed sisters and brothers, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
with all our brothers and sisters throughout the world, with the whole of creation, with all everybody else, right? We say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Stay our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Give a sign of peace to those near you, wherever you may be today. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the whole world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, I give you my heart and my soul. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, assist me now and in my last agony. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, may I breathe forth my soul in peace with you. Amen. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable now to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. <clears throat> What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light, says the Lord. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. May your mysteries, O God, kindle in us that fire of charity with which St. Francis Xavier burned for the salvation of souls, so that walking ever more worthily in our own vocation, we may obtain with him the reward you promised to those who labor well in your harvest, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And just a reminder that uh, Monday next, keep it in your diary, put it into your diary perhaps, we begin the five nights of the healing mission. It's an annual event in Esker, but it's going to be online only. So at eight o'clock each night, the healing mission will be there for the Dennis Luddy. We'll be preaching three nights for the Brendan on two nights. And uh, we invite you to take part in whatever way in your household, in your family, and to tell others, spread the word about it. It will be it's on our website and it's